Welcome to this short training session on the DS8007 transfer monitor. So to begin with, we are going to look at the keys along the top of the monitor. We'll then have a little look at some of the user keys and some of the uh, parameter functions as well. So to start with, there's the alarm silence button here. When the alarm goes off, the button at the top of the monitor will flash. So we'll activate an alarm so we can see that how that works. So in a moment you'll hear the monitor alarm, you'll see the monitor alarm silence button start to flash. To silence, you press the flashing alarm silence button and it will silence the alarm for one or two minutes depending on how your monitor has been set up. You'll also notice that the parameter itself highlights and you also get an alarm message at the very top of the monitor there as well. Moving along, the next key here is the non-invasive blood pressure start stop button. So when you press that button, you'll hear that it's inflating the blood pressure cuff. If you need to stop it again, then just press and it will stop the NIBP cuff from inflating and stop the measurement. This button's generally not activated. The next button along, the purple one, is your menu key. So this will bring up a menu for the monitor. What we can see in here is an admit discharge menu. So we can input our patient data. So patient hospital number or ID, patient name, date of birth. We can also say whether the patient has a pacemaker or not. So used or not used. If you've undocked the 8007 from a bedside monitor and you've already input this information, the information will already be here. So when you undock, you'll see that you've got your patient name at the top of the monitor and this window will be populated already. We've also got our alarm setup menu here. So I can adjust any alarms by dragging and dropping to where I want that alarm upper or lower limit to be or using the arrow keys here. And I can work my way along each parameter. There's also a page along there as well. So I'm able to set all of my alarms in my monitor. I can also go into other alarm menus here, such as my arrhythmia alarm settings and see how those have all been set up. And again, I can alter or adjust these according to my patient's needs. So for example, I can turn any on or off or I could adjust accordingly depending on my patient need. Okay, so that is also available here. So I went via the alarm setup and into arrhythmia However, it's also there as a button on my menu as well. At the bottom here, we've got table trend. So this will show me all of my data uh, in time columns, time intervals for my patient. So this is currently set to 60 minute time intervals. I can alter this so I could look at five minute time intervals, for example. I can scroll along and take that to any particular time that I might be interested in, just by moving the little bar along the top. And I could also go into my graph trend from here. Again, I can change time intervals if I want to, such as that. And I could also go into my alarm recall. So this will show me any alarms that have occurred and if I touch the one I'm interested in, it'll bring it up in a larger size on the screen and allows me to scroll backwards and forwards to view that more closely. This allows me to set my night mode. If I wanted to set up a night mode on the monitor, I can choose how loud I want my volume to be, how dark I want my screen to be, 
whether I want this to flash or not when it alarms and then I can turn it on by going into it that way. The home key here will take me back to my main monitoring screen. So it doesn't matter what windows or menus I might have open, home will take me back to the monitoring screen. So back into that menu, we'll just have a look into the menu list as well. So there's a lot more functions in here, but some of them you'll see are repeated. So for example, I can go back into that table trend from there. I can look at my recall again there that we've already seen or if I go into function it will bring up again a choice of all of those different trends options that I have. If I go into alarms that will bring up everything to do with alarms and setting alarms or if I went into the admit and discharge it will bring up that admit discharge menu again. So there's lots of ways to access uh, the different windows or menu options that are available. Okay, so that's everything within the menu there. We press the home key and we'll have a look at these user keys down the side. Now these are customizable, so they may be slightly different depending on how your monitor has been set up. So we've got a displays key here. This will have a little number on and you can just keep pressing it. You see how my display is changing with each press of the button. So it will bring a different display, different parameters, maybe larger or smaller, depending on how it's been set. But you can just scroll through until you get to a display that meets your patient's needs or that you prefer. Below that, we've got the admit discharge window again another way to access that. Below that we have our alarms again that we've already seen in menu. Just below that we have our non-invasive blood pressure auto mode setting. So if you touch that it will bring up a little wheel here for me to be able to change how often I want my blood pressure cuff to inflate. So if I wanted it every 15 minutes, for example, select that, press the blue go button, and then it will go every 15 minutes until I turn it off. You'll see all of those readings and measurements here in this blood pressure list. You can also access that on screen via a window as well. So this will show you all your non-invasive blood pressures and anything else that was monitored or measured at the same time. Monitor suspend will temporarily suspend your monitoring. As you can see, so it will save all of the data until you're ready to go again, and then it will bring it all back to the forefront. Every single parameter you can interact with. So if I touch my heart rate parameter, it brings up the heart rate menu, and that will enable me to change size of waveform or change main monitoring lead by selecting. It will allow me to look at my arrhythmia alarms again from there. And it will also allow me, if I go into the detail setup there, to set my beep beep tone. So if I select auto, you can hear that that beep beep tone or the synchronized mark tone is on or I can just turn that off if I don't want it making a noise. Every parameter is set up in exactly the same way so if I went into my arterial line parameter again you can see it brings up a very similar window there a similar menu. One of the differences with a CVP or arterial line is you've got your calibration or your zero button here so all you need to do is press and it will calibrate your arterial or CVP line, depending on which one you've opened there. There's also some quick swipe keys. So if I drag from the top to the bottom, it brings up my NIBP auto. If I go from the right, 
it brings up my trends use the home key and if it bring uh, go from the left into the center it brings up my menu again there isn't one from the bottom upwards and those are the main features and functions within the uh, 8007 monitor a couple of other little bits to to note so your on off button is just here at the top you'll see that there if i turn it to the side this is where your battery lives just in here and your battery indicator is just here at the top so whilst i've been talking it's moved from green so which is uh, fully or optimally charged down to yellow so and when it gets even lower it will go to red so there's a color indicator there uh, it will also have the time on for how long a battery you have left when it's fully charged uh, it will be four hours so four hours battery life there you've also got the time and date in this right hand corner here you have your class of patients so whether it's set to adult child or neonate and then you have your bed number just in the left there so that's everything with the uh, the patient uh, transfer monitor hopefully you found that useful if you require any further assistance you can contact your clinical support specialist uh, either via the phone number which is 01483 728 065 or via email which is training at facuda.co.uk